if a boulder runs rolls in front of your path you don't just stop and stare at the boulder and, and cry and kick the boulder. I mean, it's not going to move. So you find a way around it. You find a way around it. You find a way over it. But you don't just stand there and stop or quit. Uh, you have to keep moving. You always have to keep trying. And, you know, and, and your goal is on the other side of the boulder. So you just keep moving. And you, you find a way around it. Um, you just don't give up. My dad and I would sit out at night and we could see all the stars. And we would uh, look at the first satellites going over and you could imagine, you know, and we would talk about what it might be like to be up there and looking back. Started out in a small town in Missouri, uh, Carthage, Missouri. Went all the way through high school there and uh, ended up being valedictorian in my high school class. The reason I went into chemistry is I had a very influential high school teacher. She encouraged me to study sciences and, and, and go far in my career. I went to a local uh, community college. It's actually a four-year school. It's called Missouri Southern State College. And I got a scholarship to go there, so that made it very attractive. It turned out to be a very good college. And I ended up going to the University of Missouri Rolla for my graduate degree, uh, my master's degree in chemistry. And I worked for a couple of years after that and then applied to the University of Washington in Seattle where I completed a PhD in analytical chemistry. So my very first uh, shuttle flight, I went to the Mir space station, so that was a Russian space station, and we took the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer on its maiden flight. On my second flight, we did the Space Radar Topography mission, and on my last mission, we helped construct the International Space Station by adding the airlock. I personally was just... Um, you, are, you marvel at the size of the planet, you marvel at the beauty of the planet. You've seen pictures from space, but it does not compare with actually being there in person, three-dimensional. You have the sounds of the vehicle, but it's more the, um, the lighting that you get from the moon reflecting off of the oceans and then back into your eyes and the the lightning and the patterns that it makes. It is something like humans have never experienced before. And you feel regretful that you can't share that with more people because if more people could see what you saw and feel how you felt, I think people would have a different perspective of their planet.